Please help me welcome up our senior pastor and my uncle, Dr. Tim Story. Uh, give Pastor Stefan a clap for his birthday. Happy birthday week. You kind of celebrate for a long time, I've noticed that. But uh, I call him the boy wonder. He's very, very smart. He's got his master's from Claremont, went to Oral Roberts University, did fantastic. Happy birthday. I mean that with all my heart. Just a great person. Um, yesterday, we had fun. There was a group of us, and we went around and um, went door to door and went into malls and passed out flyers for Easter. And I was amongst that group because that's how I started. When I was 15 years of age, I'd go around at our church and I'd pass out flyers and tell people about the things of God. Why do I still do that? Because I honestly believe that God could change your life. Clap your hands if you believe that God could change your life. So um, Easter will be a, a big one uh, next Sunday. I think last time we had about uh, over 700 people come for Easter last Sunday. So make sure and invite a bunch of people and um, have them come and really have a, a God encounter. How many visitors are here again today? If you're a visitor, would you please lift your hands? I want to see you. Okay. So we welcome you to this church. You're going to like it. We're only two and a half years of age. And uh, we just changed locations. This is our, how many weeks have we been here now? Second Sunday. So welcome to the second Sunday here. And uh, I love this auditorium. Uh, I want to say thank you to our sound department back there. They are a 10. Can you give our sound a 10? And the music group, look how long they're standing and how good looking they are. Clap for them. And they're talented. I want to welcome uh, two people that are here today. Uh, Ian and Johan Skonken all the way from South Africa, but now they live in America. Could the Skonkin brothers stand up? <laughs> praise the Yira. I just said praise God in Afrikaans. I've been to South Africa now, I think it's right at about 24 times, and I've known them for years, and they're both tremendous uh, pastors and leaders. Ian is on staff at a church that has about 7,000 people in Visalia. And they gave you the Sunday off or something, Ian? Okay. And then Ian has been working with me for 20, about 25 years and helped us in so many programs. So great to have Ian. All right. So no music in the background. I don't know what I'm hearing. Was that a bass or was that a, a saxophone or I don't know what it was. All right. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 3. The book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, say him, who is him, God. In all your ways acknowledge him and he what? Shall direct your path. Somebody say, he shall direct your path. Try it again. Say, he shall direct your path. It's an interesting thing. It didn't say he might direct your path. He shall direct your path. So I was studying this again this morning, and it actually means he shall certainly direct your path. So what do I have to do? I need to trust in the Lord. Well, that's going to be difficult because we've all been hurt, and all, probably everybody in this building has some degree of trust issues. How many of you have had your trust challenged? Lift your hands. Okay. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. And again, it does not say part of your heart, a degree of your heart, a particle of your heart, but with all your heart, your whole heart. Ah, that's difficult, God. Because <laughs> what if you mess things up up there? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean, 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 literally means to lean on like as a table. 
on your own understanding. Now, how many of you are like me where your own understanding has got you in trouble at least once in the last 10 years? Uh, how many of you would admit there's probably somebody you should not have dated at some point in your life? Don't lift your hands if, if that's not you. But sometimes we lean on our own understanding on who we date, what kind of job, where we live. How many of you would admit you have moved to a place that was probably not a God idea? It maybe was a good idea, but most likely was a bad idea. Lift your hands. Like some of you all just get up and like, I'm going to move so-and-so. I'm going back to Florida because they got big roaches. Trust in the Lord, Tim's story. And do not lean on your own understanding. Why? Because your own understanding fluctuates many times. Your mindset is so good, creates your mood set. And that's one of the things I'm learning from pastoring because I've been traveling the world for all these years and it's like dating churches. When I go to a church, they're all on their best behavior. Like Wednesday night, it was me and Yolanda Adams in Houston. It was just the crowd was huge. And everybody was loving me. We love you. Oh, my God. Okay. See, now I got to deal with you people every Sunday. Are you with me? <laughs> and your moods fluctuate. Just smile. Do not lean on your own understanding. Why? Because we fluctuate. But in all your ways acknowledge him. And this is very powerful again. He shall direct your paths. He shall direct your paths. He shall direct your paths. I'm here to declare 2018 is going to be one of the best years you've ever had. Because he shall direct your paths. Somebody clap your hands like he shall direct your paths. Come on, keep clapping. Do you know that a couple years ago, I got it in my spirit that I wanted to go into Compton and do some stuff, and I was seriously going to reach out to Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine. Uh, Jimmy Iovine has always been very cool with me. He's the guy that's running Apple Music. And so I had it in my heart about two years ago. And then I got in, in, reached out to by a very powerful lady. And she asked me to do a project that we're doing on Wednesday in three Compton schools. And it's me and my friend Randy Jackson. How many remember Randy Jackson from American Idol? Lift your hands. And so I am speaking in three schools in Compton on that dreams come true. Somebody clap your hands like... That's kind of cool. Come on. And so we're doing that on Wednesday. It's not open to the public, so just don't show up because we will throw you out of Compton. But I, I believe, Christian, that, that God put that in my spirit years ago, knowing that he was already preparing the way for that to happen. And then they said, can you continue to do it because we love you in Compton, and we need you in Compton to continue to inspire the kids in Compton. Lift your hands up. That's kind of cool, right? See, I think that that is God put it in my spirit years ago, and then he directed my path, and then he set up this company, and they said, we got to get Tim's story, because they can get a lot of speakers. They said, we got to get Tim's story. I think it's a, I think it's a setup. See, there's a difference between a good idea and a God idea. So we're being set up, okay? So then it goes on in the scripture that says, honor the Lord with your income. And then it says, and then you will be filled to overflowing. Now, I want to just say this. I don't know what's going on in this church, but somehow this church has a lot of faith. Clap your hands like we have a lot of faith. Okay, because I'm, I'm going to kind of kneel here. I want you to look at me because I like to, I want to pastor you guys for the next almost 20 years. I want you to hear me. 
you guys are giving. What's up with you? You guys give. A lot of you are even tithers. I'd like to see a lot more of you start trusting God with 10% of your income and you just go, I'm going to save 10%. I'm going to give 10% and I'm going to sow it into God's kingdom and believe by faith it's going to be blessed. Okay. But you guys, you guys are givers. That's why we're able to move from that school to that school, to this school, to this school. You guys are giving. Look at me. Most churches, and Ian Skonkin will tell you, about 20% of the church is the one that pays the bills. Do you know that we have about 70% givers in this church? Clap your hands like that's awesome. Isn't that awesome? For real. I, I came to you guys as family a couple weeks ago, and I said, hey, this is easy. We only need $40,000, so we, can, we need this new stuff we need to do for this new building that we got going. And so, bam, 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 all 40 came in just like that. One guy gave 10, another one gave 10, another one gave 10, person gave 5, another person gave 5. Listen, how many of you believe you're going to have so much money within three years that you're just going to say, just count on me, don't worry, we'll take care of that. I had another person come up to me this week and said to me, Story, when you guys decide to build a church, just trust, just trust me. I got, I, I got a big portion of it. Come on. Be that kind of person where you so trust God that you say, I'm going to so trust you. I'm even going to trust you with my finances. Look, with my finances. I was talking to my mother on the way here to church. My mother, mom, you look so great. You're 87 years of age. Clap for her. And we were talking about Compton because I was, I was born in Compton, Linwood Hospital. And I said, Mom, seriously, give me the real story. So they had no phone. They have to, they, she used to have to use the neighbor's television to watch TV. We, we ended up having seven people in a two-bedroom house. And my mother has always been a tither. She's a giver. But this rich little rascal, her house is all paid off. If she ever gets bills, we pay them. Look at her. All right. So we're going to give today. So everybody get your offering envelope out and lift it up and wave it like you're going to be a big giver today. And we're going to trust God by faith with our finances. Okay. And then who can explain text to give? Is anybody around? Pastor Stefan's going to explain a little text to give. But guys, be big sowers today. Let's continue to do something big. It's going to help us also with what we're going to do coming up with Easter. You guys are awesome. I really mean it. Real quick, so there are a few ways to give. The first one is to give through the envelope that you have. You can give by cash, check, or credit card. Another way to give is to congregationchurch.com. You can give online. And then the third way is text to give. If you're like me, I do everything with my phone. Uh, what you can do is you can text Congregation Church to 77977. Uh, you don't want to just text Congregation Church to 77977 and then the amount. Um, and what's great about that is if, if you've done it for the first time, if this is your first time doing it, uh, what will happen is that you will get a text back and with a link. You click on the link. You put in your credit card information like you would typically do. Um, but once you do it, you're done. So every Sunday from then on, um, it's automatic. So you just text Congregation Church to 77977. do it again. Once the offering vessel has gone past you, please stand and sing it with us, all right? Yeah. 
stand just for a moment still in your hands. let's pray over our own lives this can you put your right hand on your heart say thank you God for protecting me for protecting my family for protecting our country and our world Lord let your divine peace come over this world it needs it take away chaos and confusion that even tries to infiltrate our homes. We thank you for what you're gonna say to us today. We yield ourselves to you, God. This is a God moment, we thank you for it. And you will protect us and you will prosper us. Say, this is the year that I will prosper. In your name we pray, amen. Shake hands with three people, tell them how great they look and then you may be seated. I'd like to welcome everybody from Facebook that is watching on Facebook Live. We get a lot of people that watch. Uh, you here at the congregation, could you please give them a big, big clap? And if you are single here at the congregation, make sure and watch your angles because we have a lot of people that watch us and your future husband or wife could be watching right now. Uh, watch how you chew your gum, because we have a lot of cameras from a lot of different angles. But we welcome you, and it's so cool, because so many of you watch literally from all over the world. So welcome, and when you come into town, come and visit us here at the actual church. Isaiah, chapter 46, and verse 9, and they're going to put that up. The Bible says this, remember the former things. Those of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God, there is no one like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. Somebody say the end from the beginning. From ancient times, things that are not yet done. Look at me. 
I hope that you're at a place in your life where you don't think you're done yet. Does anybody have any more goals to fulfill? Does anybody have any more adventure left in you? I don't know. <laughs> I hope life has knocked the, not knocked the adventure out of you yet. So the Bible says, I make known from the end of the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand. I will do what I please. Okay, then go on. From the east I summons a bird of prey. From a far off land, a man or a woman to fulfill my purpose. Say, I will fulfill his purpose. Now, what I have said, comma, that will I bring about. What I have planned, comma, that will I do. Wow. I can never tell this illustration enough about Nacho, my, my barber, my barber Nacho. Nacho uh, used to cut my hair up until his 80s. And I'll never forget, I said, Nacho, I said, where's that Mexican restaurant in East L.A.? I want to take my mother to it. I was probably about 18. And he says, okay, here's what you do. You go up, you take a left. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not too sure. Then you go up, you take a right on Imperial. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not too sure. Then you go up, you take a left. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not too sure. It's on the right side. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not too sure. I said, Nacho, how come after everything you say I'm pretty sure, but I'm not too sure? He said, because I'm pretty sure and I'm not too sure. <laughs> Aren't you glad that God does not say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper? I'm pretty sure, but I'm not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. I'm, I'm pretty sure, but I'm not too sure. <laughs> I, I've gone to build a, 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 a mansion for you in heaven. I'm, I'm pretty sure, but I'm not too sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, but I'm not too sure. God says, what I have said, that will I bring about. So what is God doing in my life, Pastor Tim's story? God is saying and God is bringing about. So what is God doing in your life? Say, say, God is saying, and God is bringing about. Somebody clap your hands like that's the truth. Come on, people. So let's try that again. What is God doing in your life? Say, God is saying, say, and God is bringing about. I didn't say your Uncle Tony is saying, your Tia is saying, God is saying, and God is bringing about. So what is God doing right now at 1102 on West Coast time? God is saying, and God is bringing about. What is God doing 24-7? God is saying, and God is bringing about. What is God doing? God is saying, and God is bringing about. That's why I tell people, I say, I don't chase dreams. I cooperate with what heaven said. Because God is what? Saying. Say it strong. Say, God is saying. I just don't feel like he's talking to me. He is, Concha. Listen, how does God speak? According to my notes, he speaks through the word. That's why we come. We grow, we learn the word. He also speaks through his spirit, the Holy Spirit, talking to you. How many have ever felt the Holy Spirit talk to you? It's sometimes you get a check in your spirit. You're like, that seems like a nice person, but there's something off. Or I'm thinking about buying this house, but ah, I don't think so. That's the Holy Spirit speaking. So God speaks through his word, say word. Through his spirit, say spirit. But God also does sometimes speak through circumstances. Pay attention to the circumstances. Listen. If you are seven foot two, most likely you will not be a horse jockey. You will probably not win the Kentucky Derby. Come on, lift your hands. Circumstances. He speaks through the word, say word. The spirit, say spirit. 
circumstance say circumstances. But here's another way he speaks. He speaks through the multitude of counselors. At this stage in my life, I will promise you, I do not make big choices unless I talk to smart people. Because I got too much going on, too much writing, and my choices now, there's a lot of people watching them at once. When I was younger, I might just get an inkling or something or, or a feeling or something or a, a, a drive and, ooh, I just feel it. And I see a lot of people on Instagram and Facebook and social media, they're like, you know, just follow your heart. No. Not if your heart is not filled with good things. If your heart is filled with faith, follow your heart. If your heart is filled with goodness, follow your heart. If your heart is filled with compassion, follow your heart. This is good, right? If your heart is filled with God's presence, then follow your heart. If it's not, please check yourself before you wreck yourself. It's right here in the Bible. It's right here in the Bible. It says, remember the former things of old, for I am God, there is no other. I am God, there is no one like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Somebody say, not yet done. Say it stronger. Say, say not yet done. As a pastor, that's what I want to get you guys to. I want to get you to the places that are not yet done. I want to get you to foreign territory. Okay. I mean, there's, there's a lot of millionaires in this church, if you didn't know that, just, just tell you that. But I want to tell you this. How many of you believe it's a possibility that God could give you million-dollar ideas and that you could be a multimillionaire within five years? Just lift your hands, okay? How come some of you won't lift your hands? Are you afraid of money? Are you afraid of having enough money that you can take care of your children's children and you can support your family? Somebody clap your hands like you hear what I'm saying. Do you know that you could write one best-selling book like The Shack? The guy that wrote The Shack, he didn't know he was going to be a multimillionaire. The guy who wrote This Present Darkness, he didn't know he was going to be a multimillionaire. All my friends that are making millions on QVC and HSN, I know them. I'm behind the scenes. I know one lady, she's worth $30 million. She says, Tim, I never saw it coming. Why are you afraid of things that you have not yet seen? So powerful. God says, what I have said, what I have said, Okay, so what if he said something different than your mama said? I got to come over here. That's good, huh, Christian? What if God said something different about you than what your mama said and what your father said? Come on, somebody. And your tío said and your tía said. Come on, somebody. Then what, what if God said something different about you than what the devil said? Oh, I'm just, mm, I'm just a, mm, I'm just a worm. You know, there's a, there, there's, there's a certain song, a big Christian song, and then they, they have part of the, part of the verse says that's, that saved a, 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 a wretch like me. Then there's another Christian song that talks about that, that, that you're a worm. I'm not a worm. And I'm not a wretch. The Bible says Jesus became sin for you who knew no sin that you might be righteous. You are righteous. You are joint heirs with Christ. You are the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You are a child of God. God has his best set up for you. Keep on clapping. They're clapping on ins Instagram and Facebook. Come on, Facebook people. Send me some emojis. Say that. Say, say what he said. That will he bring 
about. Oh, here we go today. Bring about. Bring about. Bring about. Why don't he just do it? He's God. The problem with all this bringing about stuff is that there is a process. Oh, this is so good. Come on. You think just because you have the desire, oh my gosh, I so have the desire. Just because you have the desire doesn't mean it's going to happen right now because God is going to bring it about. And in fact, in order to become God's person, you got to go through God's process. Say that again. In order to become God's person, you got to go through God's process. God the Father so believes in this, he allows his own son to be a carpenter for 15 years before he breaks out in his first miracle. What he said, what he said, I will bring about, bring about. Somebody say, bring about. Say, say, bring about. What's happening in my life? I don't even feel like going to church. Quit being a big crybaby. I say crybaby in Spanish. Yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> What's happening to me? He's bringing about. He doesn't feel like it. He's bringing it about. It's powerful, huh? He says, what I have planned, that will I bring about. So I started studying this. So number one, God plans something, and then he positions you, and then he prepares you. Aye, why don't you just do it? <laughs> Say planned, positioned. Say prepared. Say planned, positioned. Prepared. And it's weird because God will say something and in the whole bring about part, you didn't know you are going to have to work at McDonald's. Or be a waitress, right? Or be a security guard. Or have a bunch of jobs. Who, who would admit that you've had a few jobs that you wish you didn't have to have. You better lift your hands or you are lying in the church. What I have planned, that will I bring about. The bring about is the planning, the positioning, the preparation. Why is God preparing you? God is preparing you because what he said is so big. Oh, let me come over here. I said God is preparing you. Because what he has said is so, let me come over here. Come on, somebody. I said, God is, come on. I said, God is preparing you because what he has planned is so, come on, I got to come over here. I said, God is preparing you. Because what he has planned for your life is so big. But you don't see it. Because we want it now. I believe it. I see it. I read the secret. I'm not putting that book down. I'm just telling you. I saw it. Oh, my gosh. Tim Story. I knew I would totally meet you. The life coach to the stars. I knew I would meet you, and I know that I'm going to make it. I'm going to get an Academy Award within a year. I looked at this one lady, and I thought, I doubt it. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. It's a rarity where somebody just breaks out of nowhere, and if they do, they usually go back to nowhere. See, God is preparing you. Not just to get there, but to stay there. In 2018, this church is going to teach you how to get there and stay there and mark your territory and never leave. Somebody clap your hands and shout like this is power.
Is this good? I was talking to my good friend Magic Johnson one day, and, and, and Magic was saying, story, isn't it amazing how if, if, if one of us fails, people always think we're going to go down and they won't find us again? He said, they don't understand what it took us to get here. You don't understand. My mom used to work at King Cole Market making donuts. Then she, she graduated. She went real high. Winchell's. Okay. She was raising kids. Dealing with a husband that was up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Gets Jesus. Gets a little more up. Sometimes a little down. He dies in a car accident. A mother's got to now raise the children best she could. Now watch. No wonder she's so feisty. <laughs> My mother will tell you where to go and then pray for you after. <laughs> she's the first one in my life that I ever saw. This is a true story. Jordan Sapino, she's the first one I ever saw in my life. My own mother, I must have been about eight. And she was mad at my brother, and, and he was saying, I'm going out anyway. And she flipped him the double finger. I had never seen the double. <laughs> Come on. That's working as a, as a waitress at 14 in Klein's Corners, New Mexico. That's working at Kinko Market. That's having people belittle her, talk down to her. Are you with me? That's her working at Winchell's Donut Shop for sometimes bosses that did not appreciate her. That's her walking to work because we didn't have a car. She walked to work. Come on. God was preparing her to handle these kids that she was raising. Watch, watch, watch. Yeah, I don't want you, I don't want you, I don't want you. And your angels are just going, Poof. get with it. You're getting prepared. I don't want to be prepared. Then you won't be prepared. I don't want to be prepared. Then you won't be prepared. Do you know how deep this is? I don't want to be prepared then you won't be prepared. You come to church, you grow. You're being prepared. What are we doing? I'm preparing you. I'm instructing you. I'm building you. I'm building your faith and starving your doubts. You will be prepared for what God has said. What he said you will do. Somebody clap your hands and shout. Is this powerful today? Say this, say, say, I am currently being what? Prepared. Wow, 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 wow. Luke, the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 26. We're a Bible church. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. People always say to me, be careful, Tim Story. You're doing so well. The devil's after you. <laughs> He's after you too, <laughs> Crystal. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're doing so well. Be careful. Be careful. If I can handle my mother doing this, I can handle the devil. <laughs> Come on, clap your hands. Come on, people. <laughs> this is so powerful. Say, what he has said, that will he bring about. Yeah, that's what we're talking about today. Watch. What's happening in my life? 
He's bringing it about. I don't know what's going on. He's bringing it about. He, I feel like I'm behind. No, you're not. Stop lying to yourself. You are not behind. God can turn the whole situation around in one day. Clap your hands and shout, one day, one day. One day, one day, here's a Tim Story quote, one day can take you from nowhere to now here. Watch. I feel nowhere. I feel nowhere since he left me. How long ago, mija? 97. <laughs> since he left me, I feel nowhere. Pay attention. He'll take you from nowhere <laughs> to now here. What do you said? Say said. Say said. Say that will he do. Oh, my gosh. This is so powerful. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel sent by God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth. Stick with me. To a virgin betrothed betrothed to be married to a man whose name was Joseph. Say Joseph. The angel came to her and said, Rejoice, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. But when she saw him, she was greatly troubled. The Greek word there is diaterasso, which means she's shaken from the bottom to the top. Somebody say, a God idea. The angel said, behold, we would like you to have a son. He'll be great. We'll be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him his throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever in his kingdom. There will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I've never been with a man. Let me tell you something. God the father had a plan that he was going to send his son. But he needed it to position and prepare somebody to have the guts to manifest what he said. I'm about to blow you away. See, your life's about to get so good, it's going to be weird. Please get out of the way. Facebook people, send me some emojis if you like that. Let me come over here. I said, your life is about to get so good, it's going to be weird. Please get out of the way. When you say, what do you mean, please get away? Please get your negative thinking out of the way. Keep, keep your past out of the way. Come on, somebody. Keep the negative voices from people who don't understand God's ways out of the way. Because God has said, Something that is so big, it's beyond. It's beyond. Come on. It's beyond. So here's what happens. So Mary is a young lady, and she's going to get married to Joseph. You know the story, right? So she's just walking. She's living her life. But heaven has spoken. In fact, heaven was talking behind her back. Heaven is talking behind your back. They're saying, okay, now listen, we're going to take Tim back to Compton. We're going to get him involved in this. We're going to put him on this TV show. We're going to have him do this movie. We're going to have him do Broadway plays. We're going to birth the church. All these people are going to come. People's lives are going to be changed. God's speaking about you, 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 people in the back, God's speaking, I say God's speaking, God's speaking, somebody clap your hands, come on, because he's no respecter of person. Come on. So it's a setup. It's a setup. What do you mean it's a setup? 
what he has said, that will he bring about. Now, why didn't he come and get like a woman that's 40? Mary's still a teenager. Get, get, a, get a sturdy 40-year-old. Come on. Somebody that's been through some stuff. Come on. You know how you guys get. How many, how many would admit we get a little more sturdy at 40? Lift your hands. This is a teenager. But somehow, Pastor Paige, she was prepared. And she was positioned for this gigantic promise. Because the angel gets sent by God. God sent the angel Gabriel to her, knowing she would have the guts to pull it off. See, I'm looking for some people that have the I'm looking for some people to have the guts. I'm looking for people that have the guts to look past your past, past your pain, past what did not work. Come on, somebody. Past your previous mindset. Keep on clapping and have the guts to rise up and actually do what God's Is this powerful? Why didn't he get a sturdy 40-year-old? Because sometimes when you're 40, you got too much in your head already. The angel would have showed up. For I am Gabriel. How do I know? You don't know what I've been through. Lewis is giving me trouble again. So I did all this research on this, Ian. And I found out that one reason that they believe that God the Father chose Mary is because of her innocence. Not just her purity, not her, just her virginity, but her innocence. Because your innocence can make you open. Some of you have a do not disturb sign on your door. Or in Spanish, no moleste. <laughs> do not disturb. I'm going through a trial. That's why you haven't seen me, Pastor Tim. I have been going through a trial. Well, so am I. And I got to get up here and speak. Come on, clap your hands like that's powerful. <laughs> if he had come to like a 40-something that's sturdy, that's been through it, that's a little bit aggravated, irritated, who's ever met somebody like that? Just lift your hands. But no, she's innocent. She's innocent. Watch, she's innocent. She's innocent. And the angel says, greetings, Mary. The Bible says, She's thrown off. She's deaterrassoed. She's overwhelmed. She's overwhelmed. What God has for you this year is going to overwhelm you. The blessings that God has for you are going to overwhelm you. The doors that he's about to open are going to overwhelm you. The places that he's taking you are about to overwhelm you. 2019, I prophesy, is going to be even more overwhelming. 2020 is going to get even better. You're going from glory to glory to glory. Clap your hands and shout like you're going. Does anybody believe this stuff besides me? Stick with me. I'm going to wrap this up. Five minutes. I'm watching my time. Watch. Watch how good this is. Just smile. Just go. Even if you got two teeth, just go. Watch. So the angel says, Mary, we'd like you to have the Messiah. If she was like a, if she was, if she was like a grouchy 40-year-old, some 50-year-old or 60-year-old, they were like, well, oh, prove it to me. How do I know? People have lied to me before. Angels have lied to me before. Okay. She says, how will this be? In other words, I'm in, but how is this going to happen? I'm in, but how is it going to happen? 
I'm in. But how's it going to happen? That's what I'm looking for from you. Yeah, you, you, your whole family is going to get right with God. I'm in. But how's it going to happen? You, you, you're going to own one house, the second house, the third house, then the fourth house. I'm in. But how's it going to happen? Come on, clap your hands and shout. We're going to build an amazing church right in this city. Come on, somebody. I'm in, but how's it going to happen? Come on, keep on clapping. I'm in, but how's it going to happen? Your body's going to get healed. I'm in, but how's it going to happen? You, you're going to get, you're going to, you're going to have a comeback. You had a setback, but you're going to have a comeback. I'm in, but how's it going to happen? I, I, I'm in, I'm, I'm in, I, I, I'm in, but how's it going to happen? Because angel, you are talking to me at a level that I have never heard. That level, I've never, I've never heard that level. I walk into the Beverly Hills Hotel the other day to eat at the Polo Lounge. The guy goes like this, Mr. Story. Good to see you, Mr. Story. Good to see you. Walk over around the corner of the waiter, Mr. Story. My God, oh, oh, I've been following you. Oh, my gosh, I've been listening to you. You're changing people's life. I'm like, this is weird. That's a long way from borrowing people's phones, Mom. In Compton. We didn't have our own TV. Finally, we got our own TV. It was so awesome. We had a TV, and then they, we put a hanger in it. That was cool. Powerful stuff, man. This is powerful stuff. You feel you feel God here? He's here. Quit feeling sorry for yourself, please. Don't irritate me. We've all been through hell. So watch this. It's almost done. She says it's 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 beyond what I've ever heard. God's gonna call you beyond what you've ever heard. I feel that. Pastor, do you have time to talk? I feel that. Bring me something bigger. Bring, her, bring me something bigger. Like a, do you understand? Yes, God's going to help you with the this or the that, or your daughter's acting up, or your son's acting up, or you're acting up. But what he has said, he's bringing stuff about. He shoots an angel. Mary goes, this is throwing me off. I've never seen an angel. I'm dia terrassoed. I'm shaking from the top of the head. My body is beyond me, but tell me more. She literally leans in. She leans in, and she goes like this. Watch. Tell me more. No, no. You know, not you, because you come to this church, but people that are watching, a lot of them, when good things happen, they don't go tell me more. They go, they go like this. Prove it. Show me. Lean in. Lean, lean, lean. Come on, lean in, lean. Come on, try it. Lean in. Say, say, tell me more. Tell me more. Say it again. Say, tell me, more. tell me more. See, look, see, God is trying to tell you things that will take you and your family beyond. Come on, keep on clapping. Mary said, tell me more. Tell me more. I've never heard something like this. Keep on clapping. I've never, I've never, I've never, I've never heard, I've never heard heaven say these kind of things. Tell me more. Are you really trying to tell me? Are you really trying to tell me I'm going to own a multi-million dollar company that can change my children's children? Tell me more. Somebody clap your hands and shout, I'm done talking. Clap your hands like we're learning something. Come on, clap real loud. They're listening all over the world. Say what I have said. That will I bring But I didn't know to be Tim Story, I was going to have to be a dishwasher. And I was, then I was a bus boy. Then I sewed suits at Anders Suits, remember? And Bobby used to talk down to me. The manager talked down. He called me Little Smokey. Little Smokey. <laughs> Little Smokey. Why are you so happy, Little Smokey? 
didn't know. I didn't know I was going to have to do all these little side jobs. Speak at churches in the early days in the 80s, and they'd put the, the famous white pastors in one uh, nice hotel, and they'd put us in another hotel. I didn't know that. I didn't know I'd have to speak in front of jealous ministers that would get jealous because they saw my gift. Just the piano's down behind me. But it prepared me. prepared me hang around me for 24 hours you'll see my moods don't really shift anybody that works with me says oh my god you stay so consistent someone can tell me hey did you know that three people are trying to kill you I go oh that's interesting because they're not going to get me did you, did you know did you know that did you know that so and so just offered you just this amazing show I'll go wow that's that's cool. My, my mood, my moods, anybody who knows me knows my moods will stay about right where they are. You know why? Because my faith is in you, God. My faith is in you. My faith is in you. He prepared me. To handle you because some of you already are a lot to handle you think I'm joking I'm really not I like it but I don't like it <laughs> in my natural I just want to say something to you but being that I'm close to a saint I'm probably one miracle away <laughs> Probably one miracle away, one milagro. I, I, I can handle you. I want you to do me a favor next Sunday. I want you to bring a lot of people to church. How many of you know somebody that needs to hear this kind of strength coming from the Bible? Would you please get out there? Would you do me a favor and put your own problems aside for one week? How about if we fast from you for a week? Somebody wave your hands if you'll try that. Just, and we trust God. Give the Lord a clap. Sing that song, but sing it strong. I need it strong. Clap your hands and shout in this place. Pastor Page, come and stand. You make all things new. Yes, you make Try it. All Lift your hands. We're casting our cares upon the Lord. us, knowing God that you are with us, knowing 
that your word is sufficient. We walk by faith, not by sight. We believe in all things are possible through God. Greater is he that is with us than he that is in the world. Amen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Someone say that with me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Greater is he that is within me than is he that is in the world. Say this with me. God is more, God is more than, able than able to do all that I ask, all that I ask and all that I, dream to do. all that I dream to do. Come on, give the Lord a big, big shout. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Wow, if you haven't left inspired and full of God's word today, I would just thank, give a big, big hand for Pastor Tim. That was amazing.